this video, we will show you how to fit your polytunnel cover to a timber base rail or timber side rail. We also have videos that show you how to fit your polytunnel cover to an aluminium rail and using the trenching method. Achieving a tight fit on your polythene cover will result in a better performing polytunnel. Here are the parts you'll need. We'll start by preparing the framework to be covered. The polytunnel cover is secured to the side rail or base rail and around the door frame by trapping it between a rebate baton and a sheeting baton. Battens are 19mm by 38mm timber and come in 1.8m lengths and you will be required to cut them to size. The battens are secured in place using nails. First we will fit the rebate baton around the door frame. Rebate battens are fitted so they are flush with the outer edge of the frame. You will require more than one piece of batten and need to cut them to size. Start by fitting a batten to the door frame lintel. Ensure the batten is flush with the outer edges of the door frame posts and secure in place with nails. Now install battens down the door posts. If you are fitting your polytunnel cover to a side rail, then the rebate batten needs to fit between the rebate batten fitted to the door frame lintel and the top edge of the side rail. If you are fitting your polytunnel cover to a base rail, then this rebate batten will extend to the top edge of the base rail. Fit the rebate batten to the opposite door frame post in the same way and then repeat this entire process on the opposite end of your polytunnel. We will now fit the rebate baton to the base rail or side rail. The rebate baton is fitted to both options in the same way. Please note, if you are fitting your polytunnel cover to a side rail, rebate battens are not fitted to the base rail below. We only fit rebate battens on the rail the polytunnel cover is being attached to. We need to ensure that when fitted, the sheeting baton does not protrude the bottom edge of the side rail or base rail. We recommend using a spare piece of batten as a spacer. When securing the rebate batten to the side or base rail, position the spacing batten flush with the bottom edge of your side or base rail. Position the rebate batten on the top and secure with nails. Fit battens between the door frame post and corner hoop. Continue down the length of your polytunnel and then around the corner to the door post on the opposite end of your polytunnel. The corner edges are sharp and could potentially rip the polytunnel cover when you pull the cover over the structure. Remove the sharp corners with a saw. We also install anti-hotspot tape onto the sawn corners to give extra protection. Achieving a tight fit on your polytunnel cover will result in a better performing polytunnel. To achieve a tight fit, we will raise the side or base rail, attach the cover and then lower it into its original position. If you have ordered side ventilation, the base rail will not need raising. Only raise the rail that your polytunnel cover is being attached to. This process tensions your cover and ensures you have a drum tight fit. Make a mark on each hoop where the U-clamp is on the corner and intermediate brackets. Then measure up 6cm and make another mark. Loosen the brackets, lift them to the 6cm mark and retighten. Repeat this on all hoops. Please note, the nail plate that attaches the corner rail to the door frame post will pivot enough to accommodate this. To help complete this process as quickly as possible, we recommend pre-nailing a number of battens. Ensure the nails do not protrude. Nails should be 10cm apart. You have now completed all of the preparation and are ready to start fitting your polytunnel cover. Anti-hotspot tape should have been applied to all hoops before commencing the covering operation. Ensure you give yourself enough time to complete fitting your cover. This is not an operation to be undertaken alone. We also suggest that this is done on a calm day as heavy wind and rain will hinder the process. 
Only begin fitting your polytunnel cover when you are confident that it can be completed without unnecessary interruptions. Although the polythene is very strong and can withstand a lot of abuse, pulling and stretching the cover can sometimes leave finger marks. To avoid this spoiling your polythene cover, try to grip the polythene on the outer edges, somewhere that will be later trimmed or buried into the ground. Check the ground for sharp objects, stones, sticks, etc. which may damage the polythene cover. If you have enough room, roll the cover out down the length of your polytunnel. Each face of the polytunnel sheet is identical. There is not a right and wrong side when choosing which face goes on the inside or outside of the structure. Loosen the folds of the polythene cover. With one person at each end holding a corner, pull the cover taut and begin to slide the polytunnel cover over the hoops. From the corner of the polytunnel structure, walk across the width to the corner hoop. The cover should slide up and over the hoop smoothly. If you are short on space or have a very long polytunnel, you can roll the polythene cover out on top of the polytunnel from one end to the other. You can then unfurl the polythene cover. Centralize the polytunnel cover over both the length and width of the polytunnel. The cover should reach approximately halfway down the door frames. Don't expect the polythene to reach the ground at the door ends. With the polytunnel cover loosely in position, it is time to start securing it into place. At one end, trap the polytunnel cover under the sheeting baton on the door frame lintel and secure the 15cm central section, approximately 3 nails. Do not nail the entire length of the baton to the frame at this stage. Now go to the opposite end of your polytunnel. Pull the cover tight along the length. You will need to get as much tension on the cover as possible. A good approach is to pull the cover down and swing into the polytunnel using your full body weight, whilst your assistant positions the second prepared baton and secures the 15cm central section, approximately 3 nails. We will now fix the polytunnel cover down the length of your polytunnel to the timber base rail or side rail if you have ordered side ventilation. In this video we are fitting the cover to a side rail. If you are fitting your cover to a base rail the process is exactly the same. Starting in the centre on one side of the polytunnel, fix the cover into the rebate using the 1.8 meter prepared battens working along until you reach each end. The other side of the polytunnel has yet to be fixed, so simply tension the polythene enough to rid the cover of any creases and ripples. Once one side of the polytunnel cover has been fixed, repeat on the other side using the same method. However, as the cover has been fixed on the opposite side, more downward force on the polythene can be applied to achieve a tight cover. At the corner where the cover has been fitted to the timber rail, below this rail cut the polythene parallel with the end hoop. This frees the polythene at the corner, allowing pleating and fitting to the door frame post. Carefully pull the top door baton slightly away from the door frame lintel, pull down on the polythene and begin to tuck the polythene behind the baton. Secure a few nails at a time. Work from the centre to both sides until the door frame lintel baton is fully secure. Now we will secure the polythene cover to the door posts. You're looking to achieve consistent pleats. We recommend you do a dry run to gauge the amount of pleats for an even distribution. The pleats start at the centre and dissipates as you reach the straight side of the polytunnel hoop. Position a baton down one of the door posts and hammer the first two or three nails in. You will continue to pleat the polythene down the sides. Pull the cover as tight as you can and secure a couple of nails at a time. Keep working down the door post. If you are fitting the cover to a base rail, you will secure battens to the bottom of the base rail. If you are fitting the cover to a side rail, only hammer in nails until you are level with the side rail. Repeat this process to secure the cover to the other door. We will now tension the polytunnel cover. The tensioning process is the same whether you are fitting to aluminium or timber rails. Loosen the corner and intermediate clamps and push the rail down to its original position. Then firmly retighten all clamps.
Now secure the polytunnel cover to the base or side rails that spans from the door post to the end hoop. Measure and cut a piece of the batten to fit. Pull the polythene down and secure in place. Repeat on both sides and then on the opposite side of the polytunnel. It is now time to trim off any excess polythene. Carefully cut the polythene around the door frame. If you had fitted your cover to a side rail, cut the excess along the corners and length. Take care not to cut the ventilation netting. If you have fitted the cover to a base rail, some of our customers choose to bury the polythene skirt. You have now completed the process of covering your polytunnel. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk. We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.